Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Wednesday. Hey, baby, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm fantastic. I've got a guest today that has a book called To the Bridge, Nancy Rommelman. And I remember when this happened. It's about a lady who went to a bridge and threw her kids off the bridge. Remember this? Like, 2009 no. or something it was such a sad story from uh, portland oregon i believe or somewhere out in, in in that neighborhood anyway we've got her not the person who did that but a person who wrote a book about that got her coming up later in the program nancy rommelman also got a quote for today from warren buffett he says someone is sitting in the shade today because someone planted a tree a long time ago i like that so it's talking about you know planning ahead uh, very cool quote Sitting in the shade today because somebody planted a tree a long time ago. Warren Buffett. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Wednesday. John and Heidi. Make plans to join us for the second annual 80s in the Sand. My wife Heidi and I went last year. It was so much fun. And guess who's going to be there this year? It's Brett Michaels. Hello, everybody. It's Brett Michaels. I will see you in 80s in the Sand Tuesday, November 6th, Punta Cana, Dominican Republic. I promise you this is going to be the ultimate concert, party, best night ever. Let's rock on, my friends. Get your tickets now at 80sinthesand.com. Over 90% of the tickets are sold. Don't wait. 80sinthesand.com. John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you'd never ask. What was that? I have no idea <laughs> so, what that was. Something just fell from somewhere. I got junk falling off my desk. <laughs> I have so much. I, I think I need to tidy up my desk. That's what today is. But it's also National Leathercraft Day, National Relaxation Day. Are you relaxing, Heidi? <sighs> Trying. <sighs> nice. And it's also National Lemon Meringue Pie Day. Our son was telling us uh, all kinds of stuff about lemon meringue pie one night. Remember that? I we, do. Uh, we ordered it, and he was talking about. I don't remember what it was exactly. The and it was like he was. In, we were like, "How do you words. know all of we're this? Like, How do you know so much about lemon?" Well, meringue I was reading pie? a cookbook in the library at school. He <laughs> we're said, "Like what? Who reads a? Who does that?" <laughs> and he retained it. He was reading. A, not only was he reading a cookbook, <laughs> but he retained. Tell us how you make meringue, and, and he was lemon <laughs> curd. <laughs> lemon curd, well, like, which was you, not even a. What thing I had ever heard of. It's never before. been in my dialect before, but now I know things that I didn't know before. So get out and celebrate on this National Lemon Meringue Pie Day. John and Heidi. If you want to grow your business, you can either add more customers or sell more stuff to your current customers. Or a combination of both, but there's no other way to grow your business. Just those two. Add more customers or sell more stuff to your current customers. And if you already have a relationship with your customers and you have their email address, you can reach out to them with special offers to easily grow sales. And you'll make your customers even happier. Let the experts at Constant Contact help. Get a free trial now. Sign up at BetterResultsAdvertising.com. That's Better Results advertising.com John and Heidi. Coming up, we've got your brain on drugs, but first, a story here that I'm not going to say what it says in the story cuz I don't like it, but it says here a video has gone viral from last week where a wild fist fight took place in a Brooklyn nail salon after a customer refused to pay because her eyebrows were messed up, we're going to say. Okay. So they messed up her eyebrows. That's not what it says in the story, but you know what I'm talking about. I'm sure. not going to say it. I have a link if you want to read the whole darn thing. But she was very upset with her eyebrow waxing or whatever they're doing. And fisticuffs were a fly in, Heidi. Okay. Yeah, don't do that. Bad idea. Your brain on drugs coming right up. John and Heidi. This time of year, there are many parties, weddings, cookouts, and other events that often include alcohol. If you're drinking, be sure to have a designated driver. If you or someone you know has a problem with drugs or alcohol, there is help. The Addiction Hope and Helpline wants to help. If you feel like it's time to finally get the help you need, there's a toll-free number you can call, 1-800-438-0380. That's the Addiction Hope and Helpline, 1-800-438-0380, 1-800-438-0380. John and Heidi. And this is Your Brain on Drugs. A British man reportedly attacked an ice cream van and threatened the owner with a samurai sword in front of screaming children. Oh, why? It's quite a story. What 30, do you need? 32-year-old Jackie T- uh, Jamie Tickle was drunk and high on cocaine wow. when he climbed into a van and waved a samurai sword as a woman was serving three children. He then hid by a group of bins but was later arrested. Uh, Tickle was jailed for two years and eight months. It says here uh, the possession of a weapon was one of the things. Uh, the judge says the attack came out of the blue and we may never get to the bottom of why he did what he did. 
No one was injured, thank goodness. The attack caused psychological devastation to everybody else involved. The judge said he was unsure whether Tickle fully understood the seriousness of what he had done. Again, he was drunk and high on cocaine at the time. Well, then. Bad idea. Don't do that. <laughs> Very bad. Steer clear of that, and then you'll be a whole lot better. But that is what happens when your brain is on drugs. John and Heidi. Now, big screen, little screen, six-year-old Penelope Dizik. I, th- I think I'm saying that right. She's uh, an actress. Anyway, she's uh, six years old, and she was seen carrying a $2,000 Fendi purse. When she oh, went out to dinner with wow. her dad. Six years old, $2,000. That is purse. ridiculous. I don't even have a $2,000 purse. Well, I don't have any purses. <sighs> That's but, ridiculous. But, you know, if if she's doing okay, if she's an actress and she's making that kind she's of bank. She's six. Get her a Hello Kitty purse. She'll be thrilled. <laughs> well, f- speaking of other people that we can all be jealous of, because this six-year-old has a very expensive $2,000 purse. How about this one? Meghan Markle was recently spotted wearing a 22-karat gold pair of sunglasses. Cost about 750 bucks. Are there people just sitting around waiting for other people to do things that they don't like and then they write about it? Apparently. And then one last thing here. Director J.J. Abrams has apologized for making actress Evangeline Lilly do partial nude scenes on the set of Lost. So that's from a long time ago. That's been... Okay. So apparently he said, you know, we probably didn't really need that. But <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> Thanks for listening. All right, we've got uh, that big screen, little screen right there, brought to you by ChannelSurferTV.com. John and Heidi. Now you can fly anywhere in the world and pay discount prices on your airline tickets. Book a flight today to London, Paris, Madrid, or anywhere else you want to go. And pay a lot less guaranteed. Call the International Travel Department right now at low-cost airlines. 800-719-5601. 800-719-5601. That's 800-719-5601. Now your scoop of the day brought to you by 80sinthesand.com. According to research, washing your hands frequently with soap is the most effective way of preventing the spread of infection and deadly diseases. Encourage children to wash their hands more often. And if you want to do that, parents should ask them to wash a toy or two every day, increasing their daily interaction with soap and water. So they're saying, hey, you know what? Let's clean this toy up. So you would be washing the toy and you'd be washing your hands at the same time. That's a good idea. Okay. So next time you want to get someone to wash their hands, a little kid, get them to wash a toy. Ten-year-olds, only about one in ten. What's this? No, I'm sorry. Ten years ago. I don't know what I'm talking about. (laughs) Ten years ago, about one in three adults said that it was okay to use a phone while you're using the toilet. What do you think that number is up to? It's 35%. Oh, way higher. 35% said it was okay to I'm gonna multitask. I'm going to say 85%. Man, you are close. Uh, 81% say today that it's quite okay to utilize your telephone while you're in the facilities. Uh, every once in a while, I'll go to a public restroom, and I'll hear somebody inside a stall. <laughs> and you, you hear this echoing sound, and they're talking to somebody, and I'm thinking, really? It's one thing to have a conversation while you're using the restroom, but it's a completely different thing In to do In a that. public restroom. Yeah. So yeah. I do everything I can to make as much you know bathroom noise as I can. I'm flushing six times next to them. <laughs> You know, grunting, oh. <laughs> shouting into their stall. Hey, can you pass some toilet paper over Get here? Toilet paper. Say hi to your mom on the phone for me. <laughs> I don't really do that. So if someone has ever done that to you, it was not me. And I just want to make sure I clear that up. In Italy, a 32 year old man showed up at a police station and asked them to arrest him. He explained that he was wanted by the cops in another town, but I don't like their jail. So. <laughs> I came here because you have much better accommodations. That's something I would do. The cops, yeah, you would. The cops checked out his claims. They discovered he was, in fact, a fugitive, and they did take him off to their jail. They're like, well, there you go. Well, you got what you wanted. That is definitely something that I wanted. That's something I would do. But I don't want to go to my jail. I don't want to go there. I mean, they don't even have tacos on Tuesday. (laughs) Can I just check myself in here? Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, that's terrible. And Oxford scholar claims that Leonardo da Vinci's painting that recently sold for $500 million at auction was actually painted by his assistant, and it was a fraud. <laughs> really? $500 million bucks it sold for at auction. If that's the case, I hope somebody does some time for that deal. That's quite a crime. $500 million was paid for a phony painting, according to this man? I don't know. And one last story here, Heidi. 
A semi-truck caught fire on an Oregon interstate. Firefighters and law enforcement responded to the scene. They were able to extinguish the fire quickly. Ironically, guess what was being carried? What? Uh, there was a whole truckload of fire retardant material. <laughs> really? Good news, none of the cargo was damaged. The driver was uninjured. So good news on that, on both of those. But it's just interesting that it'd be like a whole truckload of fire extinguishers caught fire. That's crazy. So it was just the stuff that goes inside of them, the fire retardant material that was inside. Anyway, kind of thought that was funny, but apparently Heidi didn't. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi show. <laughs> it wasn't funny, ha ha, apparently. It was just kind of funny. Funny, ironic. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi show on a Wednesday. John and Heidi. If you want to grow your business, you can either add more customers or sell more stuff to your current customers. Or a combination of both, but there's no other way to grow your business. Just those two. Add more customers or sell more stuff to your current customers. And if you already have a relationship with your customers and you have their email address, you can reach out to them with special offers to easily grow sales. And you'll make your customers even happier. Let the experts at Constant Contact help. Get a free trial now. Sign up at BetterResultsAdvertising.com. That's Better Results advertising.com John and Heidi Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi show. Our guest today is Nancy Rommelman. Nancy is the author of a new book called To the Bridge, a true story of motherhood and murder. What was it that made you decide I need to write a story about this particular event? Sure. So on May 23rd, 2009, a woman named Amanda Scott Smith took her two young children, seven-year-old boy and seven-year-old girl to a bridge at the left at one in the morning and dropped them into the Willamette River. Um, the little boy died, unfortunately. The little girl survived. Their mother was caught nine hours later and was on the cover of the uh, Sunday newspaper, and I've been a journalist for 20 years, and I saw that photo and just said to myself, how does this happen? So I had to go look uh, and find out how it happened. And I actually remember when this was in the news, and it was such a sad thing. Now, how... As you started digging into what happened, what in the world happened that led to this that, that, that you could surmise? Well, there was a confluence of factors. There was a lot of bad behavior on the parts of both Amanda and her then-husband, uh, Jason, um, the children's father. And a lot of blind eyes turned toward it because um, to the outer world, they were very charming, somewhat successful, you know, Christian, um, made out to be loving parents. But behind the scenes, they were... There was a lot of bad behavior and um, lying, pathological lying and drugs, and um, they were all but cannibalizing each other. And uh, it was the children who suffered um, to the point where, you know, Amanda did what she did. Now, as I'm looking through here, I see there's some research that you've done as you were working on this book, and, and one of the things that you researched was the uh, topic of suicide, and there are mothers who intend to, you know, commit suicide after killing their children, but they quite often that doesn't happen. Why is that? Well, it's theorized that you know they've killed what's most important to them, um, so their suicide would then become redundant. In fact, Amanda was caught on the ninth floor of a parking garage, and she was set to jump and was caught by a police officer. Um, so she, you know, survived and was sentenced to thirty-five years in prison. Uh, but you know, I think that women also. They have free will, they have agency, and as terrible uh, as it is, sometimes they do this on purpose um, in order to hurt someone, and in Amanda's case, that was part of the factor of what, what got her to the bridge. Now, I remember watching in the news when this was happening, and again, it seems like it was just yesterday, but it's 2009 is when this was? It has, yes. <laughs> uh, it was a pretty big story, certainly in Portland, somewhat nationally, very unfortunately, in um, in Oregon that summer, we had a lot of children who were killed by parents. And Amanda's story sort of uh, got pushed to the back, but I, I had the luxury to sort of stay on it and, and write the book. Now, what was the biggest challenge when you were working on this? Because now, you know, it being this many years later, I'm assuming that, that uh, part of the reason the book's coming out now is it took some time to, to do that. But was there a challenge as you were working on this? Oh, boy, how much time you got? Uh, yes, there was. You're, you know, it's always a challenge to get people to speak with you about difficult subjects. And now you're talking about maybe the most forbidden subject of all, which is a mother killing her children. Uh, people were very reluctant to talk. Um, that took a while. However, once she was sentenced, um, she, she took a plea deal. Because we have the death penalty in Oregon, they wanted to avoid uh, her possibly getting sentenced to death. So she took a plea deal, and people that had anticipated she would be able to speak at trial and sort of 
bring to light what had happened in her life, in her husband's life. They had no one to tell their stories to. And so they started calling me, and I mean, my phone blew up and my emails, and everybody wanted to tell me what they knew and thought they knew. I don't, I don't think I had an interview that lasted under five hours, but it did take a while for people to open up about the very hardest thing that had happened in their lives. So as you were working on this book, To the Bridge, were there some interesting things you discovered during this process? Well, I discovered it's definitely not what our, or when I say our, I mean like by the mob, uh, first assumes. You know, we say two things when a mother kills her child. She's crazy or she's evil, and then we kind of go away and, and say that about the next crime. But that doesn't really explain how it happens. I, it was my job to sort of reverse engineer all the bad behavior all the lying, all the gaslighting, all the sort of mental abuse that that Amanda sustained. And she also gave out some abuse um, until she sort of had lost everything that was important to her. So her whole identity had been taken, including not just her sense of self as a beautiful woman, but you know she had no home, she'd lost her children, she'd lost her husband. And she was basically left with nothing left but these children on a weekend visitation with her. And she used them to put her husband one last time. Nancy, as I look at this book and other books that you've done and other stories that you've written, I see that you're drawn to kind of stories that other people might be kind of afraid to even write. Why are you drawn to these type of stories, Nancy? Well, I, I tend to be drawn to stories that are reported one way and don't seem that way to me at all. And occasionally that does in, in, involve um, children who have been killed or harmed and I set out to write these stories so we can know how it actually happened as opposed to maybe perpetrating in mythology that this person was a good mother or this father was a good father. In the process, you do wind up commemorating these children and having them be remembered for more than just being murdered. And and I'm, I'm never sorry that that happened. Absolutely. Well, thank you for doing what you're doing to commemorate the children and also to, to let people know the whole story, and, and hopefully that'll help avoid this type of thing in the future. Sure, and if people um, want to read more about it, they can go to my website. It's nancyrom.com, N-E-N-C-Y-R-O-M-M, and they can also buy the book right there. And the book is called To the Bridge, A True Story of Motherhood and Murder by Nancy Rommelman. Nancy, thank you again for taking the time to chat. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And the book is available right now to make it easy to find. We're going to throw a link in the show notes. You'll find that on today's page in the show notes at johnandheidyshow.com. John and Heidi. If you want to grow your business, you can add more customers or sell more stuff to your current customers or a combination of both. There's no other way to grow your business. Just those two. Add more customers or sell more stuff to your current customers. And if you already have a relationship with your customers and you have their email address, you can reach out to them with special offers to easily grow your sales and you'll make your customers even happier. Let the experts at Constant Contact help. Get a free trial now. Text Radio Trial to number 22828. That's Radio Trial, all one word, to number 22828. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Almost. A-L-M-O-S-T. There's something special about that word. Do you know what it is? Do you? What? Do you? Do you? What? Here's the fun fact. Almost is the longest word in the English letter, or the English language, rather, where all of the letters are in an alphabetical order. Oh. Yeah. A-L-M-O-S-T. Almost. I would have never known, and I, I really don't care. I was thinking that the word with the longest, uh, the longest one would have been A, B, C, D, E, F. Well, that's oh, not that's a word. Not? Okay. Thanks for listening to a fun fact on the John and Heidi Show. <laughs> John and Heidi. Make plans to join us for the second annual 80s in the Sand. My wife Heidi and I went last year. It was so much fun. And guess who's going to be there this year? It's Brett Michaels. Hello, everybody. It's Brett Michaels. I will see you at 80s in the Sand, Tuesday, November 6th, Punta Cana, Dominican Republic. I promise you, this is going to be the ultimate concert, party, best night ever. Let's rock on, my friends. Get your tickets now at 80sinthesand.com. Over 90% of the tickets are sold. Don't wait. 80sinthesand.com. John and Heidi. Time now for the grandiloquent word of the day. Today's word is ramfeasled. What do you think ramfeasled means, Heidi? I have no idea. I'll spell it. Let's see if that helps. R A M F E E Z L E D. Ramfeasled. Ramfeasled. It's a fun word to say. You should say it. Ramfeasled. Yeah, I like it better the way you say it. It is to be exhausted with work or to be worn out. At the end of a day, you can just be ramfeasled. Also, to wear oneself out would be ramfeasling yourself. 
I'm going to have to cancel our dinner engagement. I'm completely ramfeasled. Perhaps tomorrow night? There you go. <laughs> These sentences are was, terrible. Uh, I don't make them up. I just read them. Just like the grand eloquent words. I don't make these up. Where would one even go to make up a word like this? I mean, who would think of ramfeasled of all words? But somebody <laughs> you did. You made up one the other day in a business meeting. I don't was... think. No, I used the <laughs> word. It was actually, it was a grand eloquent I word. I don't think it was. It was too. I tried to I tried to use a word, scurry funge, and then they made fun of me and said I made it up. <laughs> Pretty sure that was the right word. This has been today's grand eloquent word, ramfeasled. John and Heidi. Now you can fly anywhere in the world and pay discount prices on your airline tickets. Book a flight today to London, Paris, Madrid, or anywhere else you want to go. And pay a lot less guaranteed. Call the International Travel Department right now at low-cost airlines. 800-719-5601. 800-719-5601. That's 800-719-5601. Time now for some weird news on a Wednesday. A Morgan, Utah man is accused of breaking into the stadium where the Ogden Raptors play. He swiped some merchandise and then set a large fire, and he's facing several felony charges. Let's tell you more about this. 31-year-old Trevor Flirton reportedly forced his way into a concession and gift shop at the Lindquist Field Stadium by kicking the door open. He then used a propane tank to create a large fire. There were ashes and debris and burn materials on the associated food grill and underneath of it. The charges state that the fire department had to put out the fire in the gift concession area. He had already fled. Police found him, though, half a block away. That's all the further he got away, and he had a whole load of stolen goods. All kinds of Raptors gear. He was charged with arson, criminal mischief, burglary, and theft. So he didn't get very far. Half a block, that's all the further. It's like, i got to carry all these jerseys and stuff, all these hats and other things. I don't. I'm not sure what they have. I don't even know what sport that is. Thanks for listening. <laughs> I'm not a sports guy. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Time now for your moment of duh. A woman named Liberty Bell. First of all, oh, let's just pause for a second. That's a pretty crazy. cool name. That is. A if cool your name. last name was Bell, kudos to you for thinking of the first name Liberty. That's kind of neat. That is kind of neat. But she didn't do so well. She was arrested Thursday after pummeling a female public defender assigned to represent her. Oh. She was there in a courthouse cubicle. That's not something that Liberty Bell would do. She was there to appear when an attack occurred. The victim was left with abrasions and a pair of broken glasses. Bell was arrested earlier this year after she locked herself out of a car that she had allegedly stolen. While she was free on bond for that case, that's when she was arrested in June for stealing a March of Dimes donation jar. Then she was charged with a misdemeanor count for beating up this person at the courthouse. The courthouse battery is what they called it. And the victim did not want a felony count filed against her client. So it was her own client. She said, no, just misdemeanor. I don't want to press those kind of charges. So very nice attorney. She beat up her attorney and her wow. attorney was light on her. That was really nice of her. I wouldn't have been. No. Like, Tell me that jail. right now. This Liberty Bell is going to get a gong. Would have been ugly. (laughs) Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. If you want to grow your business, you can add more customers or sell more stuff to your current customers or a combination of both. There's no other way to grow your business. Just those two. Add more customers or sell more stuff to your current customers. And if you already have a relationship with your customers and you have their email address, you can reach out to them with special offers to easily grow your sales and you'll make your customers even happier. Let the experts at Constant Contact help. Get a free trial now. Text Radio Trial to number 22828. That's Radio Trial, all one word, to number 22828. John and Heidi. Time now for Fake News or Florida. By the way, I got to tell you, I got an email from a, a listener that said we should do um, Tall Tales or Tennessee. I like that idea. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to incorporate that. He said he's going to send me some stories because he's got a couple. Uh, and I've noticed several of our stories from Tennessee where people are doing silly things. So this one is still Fake News or Florida. Heidi, tell me if this is something that really happened in the great state of Florida or am I making it up? A dog breeder was arrested for selling overpriced puppies that were actually from a local pet store. Fake news or Florida? Mm, Hmm. Florida. No, fake news. By the way, thank you. That was sent in. I like that. How about this one? Fake news or Florida? A man was late for work, so he hitched a ride on the back of a moving bus. Fake news or Florida? Florida. Florida it is? True story? 
that absolutely happened in the great state of Florida. And I have a link to the story in the show notes at johnandheidyshow.com. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. We always like to wrap things up around here with good news, and I think this is good news. It comes your way courtesy of Odiva. That is a monthly subscription service just for the ladies. All of the details at radiosavings.com. You trying to kill me with a ballpoint pen? Is that what's going on here? She just just about put my sorry. eye out. What was that all about? I'm sorry. I, just waving I did not mean out. to do that. I don't know what that was. <laughs> I may press charges. Probably not. All right. You ready for uh, a great story here, Heidi? Absolutely. Minutes after saying, I do, a hero groom jumps into the ocean to save a drowning teen. How cool is that? That's pretty cool. This bride probably That's how knew you know you picked the right instantly guy. that hey, I have the right dude right here. So uh, I'll read the story to you. Zach Edwards, his wedding day was a pretty significant event, not just because of the wedding and he married the love of his life, but he also had the chance to save the life of a teenager, thirty-seven-year-old Coast Guard uh, gentleman from the Coast Guard, and his wife Cindy just tied the knot in the sand. What on the sand rather from Shell Beach, Alabama. And that's when disaster struck. As they were posing for wedding photos, they heard somebody screaming for help. An 18-year-old by the name of Jamel Robinson was trapped in a riptide 50 yards out from the seashore. It was clear that he was struggling to stay afloat. There were lifeguards on duty. They were busy saving other drowning swimmers from the current. That is when Cindy immediately urged her newlywed husband, Hey, you want to help him? You can go. Because he wanted to go, but, you know, he was thinking, well, I I can't leave our photos. I can't leave our wedding. But she said, no, you can go. So he took off his wedding shirt (sighs) and took off his pants and took off running and went out and helped That's really cool. What a guy. Says, before he plunged into the surf, he grabbed a boogie board from a beachgoer and made his way out to the teen. He had the boy grab onto the board and helped him back ashore. How cool is that? I've got a link to the story if you'd like to read it at johnandheidyshow.com. If you click on the show notes, and you just click today, and you'll see at the bottom in the good news there. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great Wednesday. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show.